Hello and thank you all for joining me in this video today where this time I will be showcasing my space shuttle design as well as its flight path towards the ISS I've been building in the past well, a couple of weeks uh, by now. Um, so it's actually not the first model module I'm going to bring up there. So I just wanted to showcase a little bit how I kind of get the modules into the bay itself. Um, most, of the, most of the time I'm using the, uh, the docking port on the rear side of the shuttle. Now, in this particular case, the um, truss section you can see here is for the, uh, the massive solar arrays on the ISS. Now, unfortunately, it's well, it, it just fits in the inside of the bay, but usually I also have the um, uh, kind of a docking port module on the, uh, the front side of the shuttle there. But unfortunately, it doesn't fit right now with this part, uh, so I'm going to have to dock with a different part this time. So you can see the um, robotic arm on the left side. I'm using that to uh, to dock to the space station. Um, but yeah, it turns out to be a little bit finicky, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll make that happen. So as you can see here, I put my, uh, my space station into an inclined orbit, which roughly well, depicts the, the real world projection of the the ISS. So now I'm just kind of time warping until it's almost above the uh, KSC, aiming for about, I think it was 355 degrees phase angle or something like that. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you the launch as it is. I love how the uh, complete stack looks as it's descending into the, uh, the atmosphere. Now, after picking up some speed, I uh, start performing the roll. <laughs> However, I've, I've had better rolls as uh, you can see here. It tends to kind of be a little bit nervous on the ascent. Probably because it has a lot of the uh, control surfaces and drag, and it's not the most stable craft, unfortunately. But uh, always love this part as well. Looks so nice seeing those boosters separate. Now, usually, what I try to do in my ascent is I uh, try to pick up as much horizontal speed as possible. Um, because when, when I detach the, the big booster, I'm only left with the monopropellant for the, uh, the OMS system, the, the small thrusters on the upper rear side of the shuttle, uh, and there's enough fuel anyway. So I tried to use that as much as possible, I'm aiming for an APWEP, but APWEPS is of about 200 kilometers, which is the, uh, the height of the space station. So right now, I'm just performing a final roll for detaching the... Uh, big tank there you can also see the, uh, the RCS uh, thrusters doing their job tried putting them in the uh, as much as possible in, in the realistic places as uh, the real shuttle now as you can see I'm just trying to uh, get our encounter with the ISS it can be a little bit finicky at times uh, depending on your ascent if you're a bit slow or a bit faster but uh, yeah shouldn't be too hard to get an encounter as long as you've picked up enough enough horizontal speed because it can get a little bit tricky to get all the way to the ISS and back uh, using only the monopropellant if you don't have enough speed now another thing to know this these OMS thrusters are not perfectly aligned with the center of mass um, or actually they they are uh, but that's not in the prograde um, direction of the craft. So in the rear of the cargo bay, or actually at the rear of the shuttle, I place a docking port which is um, slightly aimed downwards, if I say so correctly. Um, now then I can just use that to control it from there and it should point right where the thrusters are pointing as well. There 
we go. I'm not quite sure if that is our orbital insertion done. It's almost done. Yeah, there we go. So we should have a fairly good encounter there. A couple kilometers. We can't really see what the distance is going to be. But uh, yeah, now it's only going to be a matter of coasting, um, disabling the control surfaces of the wings. We we'll just like to have them turned off. So now it's time to open our cargo bay and release some of that heat that's been building up inside of the bay during the ascent. It looks lovely, especially with the earth and the sun in the background there. Really pleased with the design of this shuttle. So time warping just a little bit ahead. Need to be careful not to overshoot our encounter with the ISS because we are coming in with a little bit of a speed difference, which we need to bleed off, of course. Um, and these thrusters, they are not the most powerful thrusters, so it's going to take a little bit of burning um, to slow our speed down. But um, yeah, as you can see here, I'm trying to push our retrograde onto the target to get her as close as possible as we can get. Now since the shuttle consists of quite a number of parts and the ISS uh, as well keeps growing of course, as soon as you start to get into your physics range uh, the frames tend to drop slightly but still still pretty playable. So what I do now um, I need to dock to the space station now. Usually, I like to dock the space shuttle on the front of the space station, as you can see there, on the big, um, you can see uh, the processing lab. Now, since I don't have the, the docking uh, module in there, I use my robotic arm, which I've set to a certain position, which should enable it to dock to the, uh, the shuttle or the, uh, the ISS right there. Now, docking isn't all that difficult. Um, just need to line up properly and then just carefully using your thrusters guide the shuttle in. Uh, found this, the, the docking port alignment uh, mod to work fairly well. <laughs> yeah, and as you can see here, I uh, kind of forgot it was a small docking port I had on the robotic arm, so I had to uh, dock to a different port. And as you can just see right there, it's very, very wobbly. Um, I can't use any of the SAS um, on the shuttle uh, because it will just, well, hasn't teared itself apart yet, but could very possibly be. Now, I uh, had some difficulties getting the payload out. Um, forgot to extend the robotic arm right there. So I have just enough clearance to get the part out. Now, and as luck, or I mean sufficient planning, <clears throat> of course, has it. Um, I'm already in the... Uh, the optimal spot to uh, to dock the uh, the module right here. Try to get the um, uh, rotation as close as possible to what I want. Um, I mean, I know you can adjust the docking ports, but it's only up to a couple of degrees, fifteen degrees maybe. So I try to get it as uh, close as possible to what it's going to be eventually. And I also like to just kind of rotate this the, the ISS so it's pointing prograde. Just looks a little bit better and makes it easier to uh, to navigate around. Now as you can see here it is almost yeah looks to be maybe just one degree off. Pretty good. So just using the, the alignment adjustment to uh, rotate it slightly. Now it's important to uh, well what I usually do after this is to transfer some of the, the fuel or all the, the monopropellant, because uh, that's what the uh, ISS uses to rotate itself. And I should have enough to get back down again. I like to have around 400 delta V-ish to get back down again. It's around three to 400 uh, meters per second that's needed to uh, do our, our deorbit burn. So as you can see here, just in dock from the space station, retracted our robotic arm. And now we are planning our descent. Now, 
I'm using the a mod to, to kind of display where we're going to land because it makes it a lot easier um, and the spatial can be a bit finicky at times so it's important that the orbit is just above the KSC you're probably not gonna get it perfectly every time but uh, well this is this should be close enough so just starting a burn right there I'm gonna take a couple of seconds and uh, before I forget the as you can see on the bottom rear side of the shuttle um, there is a small ventilation port just yeah I don't know if it's visible uh, that's the jettison port for the, uh, the fuel now I don't think I had to do it on this flight because I've used up almost all of the fuel but if there's still a little bit of fuel left in the rear um, fuselage I like to uh, jettison most of the fuel or all of the fuel that's in there uh, which should push the center of mass forward a little bit which makes it just a little bit easier to uh, to fly and uh, as you can see in the um, the map screen I put our target vector or our target actually landing target be exactly on top of the, um, the KSC um, due to the the profile of our descent right here um, it should put us actually a couple of kilometers above the KSC but uh, yeah normally when we're just done with our descent and uh, slow down quite a quite a bit spatial it tends to flip out a little bit and that kind of bleeds off all the remaining speed and then well, gives us an almost vertical uh, descent back to the KSC and this thing is pretty stable in subsonic flights but it doesn't have a very good glide ratio as you can see, we just initiated our, um, yeah, descent flip, so to put it. Uh, also activated our uh, control surfaces again, because we are going to need those in our descent, of course. Now, due to the... Uh, the reaction wheels I have in the front section of the ship and uh, all its control surfaces, it's pretty stable on its ascent. Um, nothing too special about it. The most difficult part actually is just aiming and hitting the KSC um, on your initial descent. And as you can see now, it's just a matter of um, descending further and just, yeah, make sure you don't undershoot the, the runway because. You don't have a lot of errors if you, you come up short. Um, I mean, this thing does fly like a brick. So as long as you have the altitude, you're gonna be just fine. The actual descent speed or the, the uh, surface speed, I'm not quite sure what it is at this point, uh, but it has a very, very low stall speed so I, oh yeah you can see it here it's about 100 meters per second I think I landed with even lower speed 60 70 just performed our final flare maneuver right there and we have a nice and gentle touchdown activating the brakes and the parachute which should stop us just in time for the end of the runway and I thought well you know since I'm close right now just park it right in front of the space hangar while we're at it. Because why not? There on the rear you can see the stack of RCS thrusters right, right there. Tried to recreate again what it looks like in real life. The real orbiter also has like this pretty large stack of uh, RCS thrusters on the back there. As well as on the front. Uh, tried to kind of lower them into the cockpit itself so they don't stick as much on the outside just to kind of make it a little bit more realistic same goes for the uh, fuel tanks on the side or on the rear really like those kind of uh, yeah worked out pretty fine there very well so as you can see we landed and parked right in front of the space hangar so I'd like to thank you for watching this video and um, yeah, see you all in the next one. Take care.